We had a children's science textbook once, which was put out by a Christian organization for homeschooling. It was grade one or something. Anyway, just take a guess at how it explained rain. You probably guessed it. It rains because God makes it rain. No hydrologic cycle, no evaporation and precipitation. No, it's God. Do you have any idea the magnitude of how wrong that is? How inappropriate it is? It doesn't matter if it's just grade one. It is inexcusable at any grade, at any age. It doesn't matter how young a child is. You should never tell them that babies come because of the stork, that thunder is just the angels bowling, or that it rains because God just wants to make you wet. Think about the kind of person who believes that. How small is their universe? It's just them and God. Everything that happens is caused by a magical being making it happen just for them. Their universe extends only as far as their immediate sense perception, their wants and needs, and their imagination which is severely limited by their ignorance of science. When I was a believer, I was exactly that. I thought that if I prayed for rain or for drought, that God would hear my prayer and sometimes answer it. We all probably have fond memories of thunderstorms and the smell of rain on a warm day. But beyond our immediate experiences, science actually has a great deal to say about rain. And one fact in particular, for me, is one of the grandest, most mind-blowing thoughts I've ever considered. Instead of turning our focus inward, it sets our minds soaring through the universe. We are accustomed to thinking of rain as a terrestrial phenomenon. It is an earthly thing, the sound, the feel, the smell. It is fundamental to the human experience. But rain does not fall only on Earth. On Titan, one of the moons of Saturn, we discovered just a few years ago the existence of lakes, rivers, and clouds. But these were no ordinary bodies of water. In fact, they were not water at all. They consisted of methane and ethane, creating a system of evaporation and precipitation similar to ours, but consisting solely of hydrocarbons. The majority of hydrocarbons found on Earth naturally occur in crude oil. On Titan, the skies rain fuel. Sulfuric acid rain falls on Venus, but due to its extremely high heat and pressure, it evaporates before ever hitting the surface. It no longer rains on Mars, as its atmosphere has been stripped away, and liquid water cannot exist on its surface, but it does snow occasionally. Rain also occurs in all four of our gas giants, precipitating in the atmospheric layers to the core under increasingly tremendous pressures. It is estimated that there are upwards of 500 billion galaxies in the known universe. That's one galaxy for every star in the Milky Way. Through recent discoveries in the last few years, it seems that it is almost a certainty that most stars have planets. And many of them will have more rocky planets in their inner systems than even ours does. This means that we have now discovered there are more planets in the universe than stars. And considering that it rains on most of the planets in our own system, upon how many of the planets and moons around those planets in the entire universe do you think rain is falling on right now?